Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rapture Recap. I'm Jalen Barnes and my lovely wife, Casey. Thank you so much for being here with us again. If you're watching on Rapture Go, thank you for being subscribed. If you're not subscribed to Rapture Go, just text Rapture to 797979 with your mobile phone and you'll be signed up for Rapture Go. We just thank you for being a part of today's message. Uh, today is Sunday. Um, today we had a special treat. We had Minister uh, Dell Davis Jr. Uh, teaching today and it was an awesome time in the word but the entire service flowed together as you know Casey is our worship leader here and um, the Lord's been dealing with you with some things about worship over the past week couple weeks I said a whole year honestly oh, but yeah, for sure there's been a few things he's been working with you on and I believe you began to you actually kind of taught some about worship uh, this morning if you want to kind of recapitulate a little bit just the broad strokes of what the Lord was showing you uh, about worship as it pertained to us and how we have not been worshiping the way God deserves, the way he desires it. Yeah. I mean, I've been asking the Lord for revelation of worship for a long time. And like I mentioned in service today, you know, I don't have the full revelation of it yet because it's something that I'm still learning myself. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that it's not what we've been seeing, you know, mm -hmm. in churches. When people say worship, we automatically see service we see we see singers we see music we mm -hmm. see an image of what worship looks like or what yeah. worship is but worship is not any of that you know worship is simple in the simple most simple form <laughs> is surrender yeah. surrender of your heart your sincere willingness to give yourself over to god yeah. I just learned recently that, you know, the Bible talks about give and it shall be given nothing to you, press that chicken together. You know the scripture. Mm -hmm. But that's not just relating to money. Mm -hmm. It's relating to our willingness to give of yeah. ourselves. We are the greatest gift that we could ever give God, or we are the greatest thing we could give ourselves is giving ourselves to God. I'm trying to slow down here. Um, and when we do that, God will give back unto us. Mm -hmm. Because God is waiting for an opportunity to give, but you can't, he can't give into something that's not open. Yeah. Because DJ was talking about today, um, you know, I've been being open to him, mm -hmm. like that willingness, like that surrender to him. And God wants to fellowship with us. Yeah. And worship is fellowship. It's not a song, it's yeah. not a particular note. You know, if you can sit in a service and his worship is going on, and you're so in tune to what the worship leader is saying or, or singing. Because I've had people to, you know, make notes in my voice. Like, oh, I know you want to sing your best today. Or, or you know, or you hit that note really good today. And I'm like, is that really, really mm -hmm. what the, you got out of service today? You know, you were so caught up in how I was sounding or how mm -hmm. I wasn't sounding that you can make a note of it. Since so something you ain't doing right. You know, I don't come in here to try to entertain nobody or to try to sing the best, whatever. I'm here to say and do what God wants us to do. So what keeps a person from truly worshiping, from truly surrendering? What is that block? The lack of them? trust. And you just talked about today about we don't know God. We don't know him. So we're not going to worship anything that we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't have a relationship with him. We have a, a knowledge based mm -hmm. off of we come to church, we hear about the word. Some of us maybe grew up in a church um, a, a Christian home and things like that. We've heard about God. We've heard Bible stories, but a lot of us don't have an intimate relationship to the point where we can just surrender mm -hmm. and trust. You know, it's, it's it's like a marriage. You know, that's why I believe God established marriage so that we can learn mm -hmm. how to trust, learn how to worship Him. Because marriage is the high, one of the highest institutions of covenant that mm -hmm. we, that God established marriage. Because in marriage, you have to surrender. Yeah. And, you know, I know just between you and I, mm -hmm. I trust you immensely. Like, I don't trust anybody, except God, more than you. Mm -hmm. I know you have my best interest. I know that. I don't, mean, I don't even doubt that because I know you. I've spent time with you countless hours. We spend time talking. We're intimate with one another. We're just, we're, what's the word I'm looking for? I could be used it today. Fellowship. Fellowship was another word that he used about, like, when you get into water. Immerse. Oh, immersion. Immersion. We have immersed ourselves into each other that we trust each other with our money, mm -hmm. with our bodies, with our deepest secrets. Mm -hmm. You know, we trust each other that if I say they look out for this, you're going to look out for mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that kind of thing. But with God, we don't. We have an external experience with God, but nothing internal. Well, what I noticed is when we got married, we didn't start that way. No. That trust and that intimacy built as we fellowshiped, communicated. Yeah and learn to surrender to each other. Yeah. So if we don't do that with God, you can't just get born again and just say, well, I just trust God completely. No, you don't because you don't know him yet. You can't trust somebody you don't know. 
And so what uh, Minister DJ Davis was sharing today was that that fellowship comes from the time spent yeah. with the light, which is the word. You know, he went to uh, John chapter one and John chapter one, one uh, the, the apostle John really breaks down who God is as, uh, in relation to the word. And in John chapter one, verse word, he said, in the be verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God mm -hmm. and the word was God. Um, you look at verse three, all things are made by him without him was not anything made that was made. In him, in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So we really broke down what he really took us through and showed us was how the word, light, God, all being synonymous. So when the scripture says in Mark 11, 22, have faith in God, have faith in the word mm -hmm. and that word is our light. So if we want to truly trust God, to truly surrender to him in our worship in, in, or with our finances, with every part of our lives, we want to truly walk by faith with the fellowship, with his light, with mm -hmm. the word. That was the key point. And he said, you know, we try to do the speaking to the mountain, um, be that move, cast in the sea, ask anything that we desire shall be done to us. We try to do all that, that's in Mark 11, while skipping the first part, which is we have to abide in this word yeah. and let the Holy Ghost reveal in us what to ask. So you have to spend time with that light. So uh, his message today, the title of it was Walking in the uh, Light of the Word. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how what will commonly happen to us as believers is we'll get a revelation from spending time in the word by being immersed in it and then we'll walk away from it to go do something else, to go activate and use that word. But once that faith is used up, if you get away from the light of that word by not being fully immersed in it, you can't run off the memory of the word. Yeah. You gotta constantly feed on it. So if you're trying to get a faith manifestation, you're struggling, check your immersion in the word of God. How much time are you spending in the word of God? Is it a daily affair? Is it the, and it's like, well, how much time do I need to spend? What's the formula? The Holy Spirit will lead you in that. But the point is you have to give attention, constant attention to the word of God. That is how you fellowship with the light. That is how you learn God and know who he is. People say, well, it's hard to know God. No, it's not. You just got to know his word. And that's how if you, you, say, and word, that's you, how you stand in light. Yeah. David said that thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Mm -hmm. And if you want to stay in the light, you have to stay in the word. He, DJ, he's a, I call him DJ. He's my brother, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Minister Dell Jr., uh, he, um, he's a great example about the sun. He told us that you know, it takes eight minutes yeah. for the, the light, light from, from the, the sun, sun to reach to, us. To reach us. So if the sun was to ever go away, mm -hmm. it would take us eight minutes for us to even realize yeah. that the sun was gone. Mm -hmm. So he used it parallel to how we do the word. We get a revelation of the mm -hmm. word. So we live in that light for that moment. But then we stop attending to the word. And it may take some time for us to realize that the light of that word mm -hmm. has dimmed. And we moving further and further and back from yep. that light because we're not attending to it. We're not staying in the light by keeping in the word. So then at some moment you find yourself in darkness yep. and you think you doubt the word, but he was saying today that a lot of what we think is doubt, yeah. it really is darkness yep. because we stop attending the word. Mm -hmm. Now, if you stay in darkness, mm -hmm. it is definitely breeding ground for doubt. for doubt. So that's why we have to stay in the word because yeah. if you're in dark too long, you will begin to fall into doubt. Yeah, and you, you begin to doubt the word, even if you had manifestation in the past. Yeah, and, you know it was so timely that he taught that because I had been dealing with that. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking about the past several weeks the faith message that Doctor Davis has been teaching, and this message is a perfect complement because what had been happening was I was getting faith manifestations, but as I was moving on to the next one, I was having an issue, and I felt like, why am I doubting now? Yeah. I just got this manifestation. I should be like David, killing the lion and the bear, and you know, moving on to Goliath and not having a problem. But David, he remember, he's the one that said, yeah. never lie to my feet. He talked about hiding the word in his heart. Yeah. He kept talking about how much he loved God's law. David immersed himself in the word. Mm -hmm. That's why he wasn't afraid of Goliath. That's why he was so confident. It wasn't because he killed the lion and the bear. It was because he knew the God who gave him the power and the ability to kill the lion yeah. and the bear. Yeah. He knew who God was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his ability. See, you, you, the, the working of your faith isn't because I've got this faith to work before. I didn't completely understand that before this message. The confidence of faith is the confidence of knowing who God is because of your fellowship with him through his word. And you can't go off of memory. You can't let the manifestation you got last week, the last time, the last healing, that last financial manifestation where God came through, that can't motivate you to your next faith project. It won't work. Only 
faith cam. It's no faith different than the when word can. you fill up your tank this week and mm-hmm. you run it out. You know, by the end of the week, you got to fill up again. You can't say, well, I filled it up last week. Mm-hmm. I should be able to go this week without filling up again. You know that made no sense at mm-hmm. all. You're going to be at that pump filling up as you know I got seven days to yeah. of driving to do. So I'm going to prepare myself and fill up today. We make jokes all the time. I drive my car a lot. I, I put that. a lot of miles on it. And so I got to fill up all the time. You don't drive your car as much as I drive my car. So we joke about how you go a long period of time without sure having is. to fill up. But there's a lesson in that because if you are walk, walking by faith, if you are working mm-hmm. and working that faith out of you, you got to fill up a lot. Mm-hmm. You got to be in this word daily. Your faith is constantly being drained by the expression of your faith, by you working. It's like someone eating and working out. You're burning calories. You got to eat right. again. So you need to eat this word consistently if you're walking by faith. Now, if someone's not walking by faith, you may not have a desire for the word at all. All this we're teaching may be going over your head because the word isn't even that important to you because you're not walking by faith. So you don't need to fill up. But those of us who are walking by faith, who got faith projects on the line, we're telling you right now, you got to stay in that light. You got to get in this word. You got to feed and feed and feed. You know, and, and I better understand now because there's been a lot of um, things in the news lately about people who are avid believers of God's yeah. word. And mm-hmm. they've led many people to, to God and they were really strong mm-hmm. about their faith on certain topics and things. And then all of a sudden you hear them say, well, I don't believe in that anymore. Yeah. I've changed my view on how I mm-hmm. believe about God yep. or these subject matters. And I said, God, I said, how in the world? So I would say, well, Lord, they must never had a real experience with you before. They may have, they never had an experience with Jesus. But how can you walk away from Jesus mm-hmm. like that? Well, based on today's lesson, I've learned that all those people, when they were high in that moment, yeah, they had a real experience mm-hmm. with Jesus. They really, truly had a real Jesus experience. They felt the love of God. They knew the love of God. But they walked away from the light. Yep. They stop attending to the word. And what happened is we run on momentum for so long yep. that you don't know that you're really running on fumes. Mm-hmm. And if I'm using a car as an example, if you don't put oil in your car, if you don't put gasoline in your car, if you don't, your car is dry. And what I don't know, I'm not a mechanic, but I know that if you don't put oil in your car, your cylinders and stuff, mm-hmm. they'll start rubbing together, cause friction. And that's a problem. And then you're going to burn out. The engine is going to blow at some point. So it's like the same thing. These people, and us included at mm-hmm. times, I mean, I'm not going to exclude myself because I've done that before. I've exhausted myself and trying to find out how did I get to this mm-hmm. point because I stopped attending to the very thing that got me to that point in the first yep. place. And um, so when you hear about ministers and, and prominent people falling from the faith, you know, they don't believe in God anymore or their view on God is different, it's because they stopped attending the word. They fell into momentum mm-hmm. and before it was too by the time it was too late they were so far from the light of the yep. word they were so far from the sun that they were in total darkness yep. they can't even see how far yeah how and then far. when it hits you it hits you and it's sudden and you realize yeah. i just don't and do you anymore. not know just you can be in the dark for so long this is a physical thing you can be in the dark for so long that your eyes adjust mm-hmm. to the darkness yeah it adjusts to the darkness and you can this can become your new normal and that's it's so devastating so it can happen to anyone the moment that you begin to not attend the word yeah. on a daily basis yeah. that's why the Bible talks about meditate Dang. day and night mm-hmm. day and night you cannot let up and he told that. Joshua to do that because of what Joshua's assignment yeah. and mission was if you've got a big faith mission you need to be in that word day and night and he day told him this is what you're going to need to do if you're going to have the courage he said be, be very courageous be bold go and do this but you got to meditate in this word day and night if you're going to do it. Because that's where that confidence is going to come from. From that time spent in the word. It's not prayer by itself. No. It's the word. No. Not even worship by itself. It's the word. Mm-hmm. It's not giving by itself. It's the word. you got to fellowship with that word. You can't get around it. And so that means you've got to make some time. We're busy people, but that's the devil's trick. Get you so busy that you don't spend time in the word. You're going to have to make some time. Somehow, some way. Well, I mean, listen. He, did you also say, you know, he... We talk about phones a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. We, as Americans and all, you know, this culture. Period. We are on our phone, and I'm guilty of this too. And we are on our phones all the time. Social media, everything is on our phone. And you see people walking around with their heads down. People walking across the street with their heads mm-hmm. down because we just cannot be detached from this phone, this technology. And while technology, I'm for. I think technology is. I believe technology is from God. God created it for us to use for His glory. Mm-hmm. But like anything that doesn't get hands on, we abuse it. However, we need to take our technology 
and turn it and put the word on it. Mm -hmm. You got to put the word on it. Listen to the word. I mean, in your car, listen to the word. When you're in the bathroom, listen to the word. There's opportunities to have the word coming in all the time yeah. if we take advantage of it. And we can stop using an excuse, you know, I'm so distracted, I'm so busy. That's not even a real excuse anymore because you have the ability to walk around with wireless earphones. Yeah. You got the ability to everything else. The word can be going 24-7 all the time. You want it. If you want it that way. So even this today's message, I have to challenge myself to spend more time yeah. in the word. And you think, how important is the goal? Mm -hmm. the, your relationship with God, the manifestation that you need, the deliverance in your family and in your body and, and in your finances. How important is it? Because that's what you'll put in. Because there have been times I've been going down the road, like you said, from work. I've got my phone on. Um, and I may play something on YouTube that's entertaining mm -hmm. to listen to. Something I like listening to that's something to do with some interest that I have, whether it's sports or, or video games or comic books. I mean, listen to something about those topics. Nothing evil about any of those things. But sometimes when I've got a choice between listening to that or listening to teaching on the word, I, I go to the word because I'm like, what I'm believing for, yeah. what I want to see manifest in my life is so important. And this other thing that I can listen to, nothing evil about it, but it's not going to help me. It's not going to help me reach my destination. And I want to reach my destination so bad. I'm so dynamic about reaching that destination that I would rather spend that 30-minute drive home listening to the Word because that's going to build my faith. Listen, if, you, if you're, all you, all you want to be is a basic, regular Christian, make mm -hmm. it to heaven, then what we're saying yeah. don't apply. You yeah. know, just keep going about your regular mm -hmm. day. But if you want those people that say, you know what, I want to please God all the time. I want to see the kingdom of God advance in this yeah. world. I want to be one of the reasons why God's voice gets louder and yep. bigger in this world, then I'm going to surrender myself. This is what I'm going to do to make sure that happens. God, use me. Whatever it is in there, use it. I surrender. I give it all to you. I worship with my life unto you. Yep. And that's really what God is designed. He wants us to worship with our lives. Mm -hmm. And worship doesn't, it's not always music and holding no, hands it has up. Ended, yeah. it, it, it's how you mm -hmm. carry your life. Yes. It's how you carry your life. You can worship at work yeah. by how you do your work. You can worship because everything is, you surrender it to God. And if God tells you to move, you'll move. You do what God tells you to do in any situation. So that's what worship is. It's not, it's not necessarily a, a position, a physical position. Mm -hmm. It's your heart's position. That's what worship is. Yeah, I mean, that's it. It's, it's the yeah. attitude of your heart, your position in your heart. And that's the kind of worshipers that God's seeking. Yeah. Those who worship in the spirit and in the truth. Oh, the, oh, can I say this? Yeah. The Bible talks about he seeks worshipers. Mm -hmm. So if God's going to seek you, you got to be worshiping. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't seeking nobody else. I mean, we, worshipers. It's, it's incorrect <laughs> prayer, but it's like, God, do you see me? I need you to come touch me. I need your touch, Lord. Like, I, I'm reaching out to you, God. I feel like you, you don't see me. You're looking me over. We want God to find you. I want to start worshiping. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> that's what seeking after. Light on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Praise God. Well, thank Praise you for God. watching this week's Rapture recap. Uh, we love you. Sign up for Rapture Go. Text Rapture to 797979. If you would like to support this ministry financially, go to raptureministries.org. You can find the link to that in the description of this video. And you can give by clicking the Give tab and give securely through PayPal so you can support our efforts and our missions in this house and going out online to do the things that we do like this. If you want to listen to this message by Mr. DJ Davis uh, that we talked about today, it will come out on Rapture Go this week. So again, text Rapture to 797979. <laughs> The message is an awesome message. It'll change your life. Um, thank you. We love you. Uh, thanks for watching this week's Rapture Recap. We'll see you on Sunday.